1920 in one of the local newspapers and the uh, person writing the article said that uh, what would happen if a group of Tibetan monks in uh, orange, uh, orange gowns with pigtails uh, beating drums marched down Butte Street and he said nobody would notice. <laughs> so it's a sort of joke, but it makes a point about multiculturalism, early multiculturalism. A friend of mine now is going to London, and you hear about we have London, but it's blacks and blacks, blacks, whites and whites, and blacks and whites and whites against each other. Me, I don't understand that. I mean, when we grew up here, we all stood together here, which you still do today. Well, well it, again, it, I was the, the whitest kid of all my friends. You know, so when I was first, <laughs> you know, so when I was in, in, in school, 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, yeah, I was the whitest kid of all my friends. So I, so I had a kind of um, a bit of an identity crisis of, you know, wanting to be a bit darker, <laughs> you know, to, to kind of fit in. When I first came to Cardiff uh, as an African American, um, I was shocked by the degree of social integration. Shocked. Absolutely. Sure. We're looking for a lot of things. I mean, a new mind. This is the land. This is my dream. This is the land of opportunity. Have you hear that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, it go bursts in your head, and then in the end you find that's what you're not looking for. I'm in between. Uh, my wife is in Somalia. I live here, and my brothers and sisters, and my history is in Denmark. So I'm in between, and when I say home, I mean three homes. <laughs> so I could live three lives in three months and be in three different places and still call it home. So yeah, yeah I, I, just to be free-spirited, the whole, really the whole world is our home. <laughs>